Hello out there to you. In this video, let's consider different types of elasticities when I'm trying to compare them. What is more or less elastic? Um, before I do the specifics, let's just think in general uh, what elasticity actually means. So what we're really measuring is the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. So this is going to be this is going to be change. This is quantity demanded, and this is price. Okay. So uh, if the change in quantity is higher than the change in price, then we say it's elastic. And if the change in quantity is less than the ch proportional change in price, then we say it is uh, inelastic. So that's what we're measuring now. All linear demand curves have a, an elastic and an inelastic range. So it depends on where you're at on that demand curve. So here's like a demand curve. And you, you could graph specific numbers. I'm just going to do this in general. So here's price. And the, these problems are using P of X. So price of, of whatever this product is. That's why it looks like that. And typically, you'll just see Q. right? So this is quantity demanded of X. So this is just quantity here. Um, and what we could do is, is as we, so demand gives us total revenue. Okay. So total revenue is price times quantity. So at any given price here, I could find that price and multiply it by that particular quantity. This gives me total revenue. Okay. So this whole thing right here is how much money the seller would make if they picked a certain price. Now, what we really care about, the only reason I tell you that is that we care about marginal revenue. So marginal revenue is the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. Okay. So if I picked a price here, this total revenue, and then I pick this price here, I'm going to increase total revenue by this and I'm going to lose total revenue by this. Okay, So that change, that, that uh, loss here and this increase here, this gives me marginal revenue. So I can actually graph the marginal revenue curve. When the curves are linear, the marginal revenue curve is always going to start out at the same origin point and then it goes one half, it's going to intersect the quantity axis at one half of wherever the end of the demand curve is. Okay, And there's more on that. There's more math technicalness, but you need to kind of conceptualize this, and here's why. So at this point right here, uh, we go up here. Okay, so this particular price right here. This is the price where marginal revenue is zero. Okay, and so when marginal revenue is positive, okay, so when it's positive, by lowering the price, we can make more total revenue. So total revenue increases when marginal revenue is positive, okay, because the margin is the additional. Okay, total revenue would go up. So in this range along the demand curve, this is the elastic range. Okay, at this point here, marginal revenue is zero. You can see that from this part of the curve. Marginal revenue is zero. And that's the unit elastic point. So when marginal revenue is zero, that's a unit elastic. So total revenue doesn't change. And then down here, by lowering the price, I actually make less money. So when marginal revenue is negative, total revenue falls by lowering the price. We're in the inelastic range. Okay. This has to do with the revenue test, but this is helpful when looking at these, these other types of problems. So elastic range, 
inelastic range and then the unit elastic part. So this, this allows us to compare. Okay, so let's compare some of these. Okay, so this one's pretty straightforward. I can just sort of eyeball it. Um, this guy right here is more elastic than this than this curve because this curve is sharper. It's got a sharper angle. So, or you could say it the, the other way that it, the curve on where it's intersecting point A is less elastic than B. Okay, I don't really need to do um, this fancy stuff. It's just um, this one is flatter and stretchier. That's kind of what we mean by elastic. Okay, um, so there you go. Okay, then on this one, um, we're at a different point along its its demand curve. Again, B is going to be in its inelastic range, and A is going to be in the elastic range because if I draw out a marginal revenue, so there's the whole thing, and then we kind of go halfway there. Okay, I'm on this side of the unit elastic point for point A, and I'm on, if I did that with point or with B here, right, I'm on the inelastic zone of point B. Okay, they're also sharper. Okay, so that's how to compare those two. Let's see these two. Um, here I've got some kind of ray going there. I don't know what that's supposed to denote, but that's okay. Uh, so I'll just take another, and it's about here. So this is B is in the elastic range again, and then A is going to be in the inelastic range because I'm right about there. Okay, but either way, uh, we know that point A is less elastic than point B. Okay, this is actually kind of the same same problem. We're just looking at different things. You'll get more familiar with this kind of stuff. Um, okay, now we can look at this. Which one is flatter and stretchier? Well, that's point A. Okay, point A is on the flatter uh, demand curve, and then B is a little bit sharper. But we can do our our trick here. So one half, about one half there. Okay, so B is in the inelastic range. And then about here, A is in the elastic range. So, so points along A are more elastic than point B. So use that marginal revenue trick there. Okay, again, um, this time uh, A is a, is a little less elastic than B. B is flatter and stretchier, but again, let's use our um, Marginal revenue line. So marginal revenue line says that B is in the elastic zone. What does it say about me? A is also in the elastic zone. So uh, without numbers, that have kind of a hard time. These these actually look like they might be the same um, because you've got a more elastic point on a less elastic curve. So that's how I would talk about that one. Uh, these guys, okay, so let's go here about halfway there. So A is elastic. Um, A is gonna be more elastic than B. B, B is right about unitary elastic. So as you go further down its curve, you get um, a less elastic. So that's that's kind of that's sort of a rule you can follow, and that's that follows on mine. The further down you go, you get more inelastic, or you get less elastic. Is how we would talk. Okay. Um, these guys look the same, uh, so they look like they're both. Unitary elastic. Um, did I say that? Actually, it looks like A is a little bit less. If I use marginal revenue there, mm, let's look here. Yeah, 
Yeah, to me, um, A looks more elastic than B. If, it, it just depends on what, where I'm, you know, I'm measuring points. So A looks, looks less elastic than B because B is further down on the curve. And same thing here, B further down on the curve than A. So I would say that A is uh, less elastic. A looks like it's uh, right about its unitary elastic. And then B looks like it's in the inelastic range. So that's a way to think about it if you're comparing elasticities there and, and what, you're, what you're doing. So you could also do some examples with numbers.